Hey everyone, welcome back to One Stop Tabletop. My name is Will, and I'm super happy to have you guys here because I have a new camera setup. As you can see, trying out a few new things. I have a few new things in the background. As you can see, my lovely new bookshelf. Actually, super glad to have it because I was really unorganized before this. So, today, we are going to be talking about clear plastic models and how to paint them, or at least some ways that you can paint them. I picked up a few of these little sort of ghost models that were completely clear plastic, but I threw a few coats of paint on and they are sort of now blue ghostly looking things and I think they look great. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to be doing all that. Before we get started talking about how we paint our models and everything like that, we need to go over just a quick few distinctions of what we're going to be doing. See, with the clear plastic models, we kind of want to keep that clear plastic translucent -y kind of look, whereas with normal models, we're going to be covering up the entire thing and painting over them and stuff like that. So this creates a few interesting, unique challenges for us, and there's basically two different ways that you can be painting this. I'm only going to be showing you one way of how I painted them, but I will at least talk about the other method. You see, the problem is we want to keep the translucent look, but translucent plastic pretty much loses a large percentage of its sort of translucent property as soon as you start putting paint on it. So this is kind of a problem. So before you start painting all of your translucent models, uh, I want you to think about, you know, how much detail do you really need in them? For these guys, I probably actually didn't need this much detail, but I just had a lot of fun doing it. Um, but they kind of did lose a lot of their transparent color they're uh they're very very blue and not a lot of light goes to them now of course if you are putting these on top of some kind of light source you really don't need to think about this as much but if you're trying to go for just the light bulb daylight kind of thing it's something you're gonna have to think about and kind of weigh the pros and cons of how much paint do you want to use how much do you want to lose of that effect uh and maybe even just test it out on a few things and see how it works for you just a couple considerations to think of so let's go ahead and talk about some of these challenges that we have in front of us here. We'll take a cross section of sorts of one of our models and just kind of look at the general idea of what's going on. You can see I have a picture here and this gray area represents sort of a cross section of the plastic on any given model. You can see that we have just a nice little soft area, some ridges, some sharp points, just a general idea of what a model would look like. When we paint models, we first cover the entire model with a primer coat. This is shown in the black here, and it covers everything in the entire model. This is to help us actually paint onto the primer of the model better, because paint generally doesn't stick to plastic that well, but it will stick to primer really well, and primer sticks to plastic really well. So it's really important to have this first layer set up. After that layer, we typically add in a layer layer, which I know sounds confusing, uh, but this is usually things where you will hear things like a, a base coat or a, uh, a generic solid color scheme. Uh, this will be you know, your, your very first layer of paint that usually covers, if not the entire model, it will cover very large sections of the model. So if you're painting a coat, you'll paint your entire coat this color, then all the pants a different color. Uh, that'll be the layer, but as you'll notice, it also will cover the entire area, just like the primer, uh, but this will be for individual areas. The next step after we've done some layers is typically to do some kind of wash, which is what we'll be doing today. As you'll notice, the wash is something that kind of pulls down into the recesses of models, so it goes down into all the little cracks, all the little seams, and really brings out those details, and washes are amazing at doing this. And as you'll see this little diagram here, the wash kind of flows down to the lowest points of the model. Uh, it still goes up on some of the sides, so it's still pretty handy for some of this. Uh, but it will be darker the, the further into a crease that it goes because there's just going to be more paint there. And the final layer that we add in is usually a detail layer or sometimes a dry brush layer. Uh, and these are, as you can see from the diagram here, these are the ones that cover the ridges of a model. Uh, especially if you're doing dry brushing, it will go over just the ridges and it will pass over the recesses of the model. I'm not going to be showing you how to do dry brushing and detailing today because I really want to have a separate entire video for that. Uh, but just so you get the idea of dry brushing is what will do just the ridges and the high detail points. 
you can see that all together this forms several layers of paint that will cover up a model and will do different parts of the model. This is actually the pretty standard way that most models will get painted. Of course, there's always exceptions to how things can be done. Uh, you can always add in more layers and washes and details and things like that. But generally speaking, this is how the majority of people will paint their models in broad stroke terms. So since we're going to be dealing with translucent, clear plastic models, we're going to have to remove a bunch of these layers, which, as we can see, will cause some problems. But like I was talking about before, this is where the trade-offs start coming in handy. So let's look at the two different layers to this process that we'll be keeping so you can see what things you might want to use for your models. The first method and the method that we'll actually be covering today is to do just a wash on top of the model. You can see how the wash will fit into all these little recesses of a model, but the ridges will stand out. Now the ridges, if they are clear plastic, means that's where the light is going to be coming through. This is a pretty good method, but it also kind of covers a lot of the model in certain areas. So again, you're going to have some areas that just don't look very translucent at all. But if that's what you're looking for, it's going to look awesome. The second method is to keep that last detail layer or the dry brush layer, which as you can see is the complete opposite of the wash layer. It's going to do just the ridges, but keep all the recessed areas totally clear. Uh, this is probably not going to work very well for things like human models, like what I've been doing. However, if you have things like perhaps uh, magic spell effects or some kind of flame or fire, uh, this will work a lot better for models like that. Or if you're going to be putting things onto a light source, generally speaking, I would say this is probably going to be the method that will work better for you. So decide how you want your model to look or what parts of your model you want to have the translucent effect to actually take effect. Sorry, that's a weird sentence to say that way. Uh, but it's going to be one of these two. It's going to be either the wash or the detail. Uh, so pick one, go for it, try it out, maybe try both uh, either way. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the actual process of how we make our wash and how we apply it to the model. All right, so before we begin, of course, we will need to get some of our materials that we will need to do this process. First thing that we're going to need are colored paints, uh, whatever colors it is that you want to do. Uh, for this, since we'll be doing very specific types of washes, I recommend that you do a white uh, as well as whatever kind of colors that it is that you want to do. Probably not going to be doing too much black or the darker colors in this video, but you'll see some of that later on. Since we're going to be doing a bunch of washes, I've actually updated uh, these process that I used just slightly. Uh, before, I should be using ba just basic uh, dishwashing soap. But I've actually upgraded to this uh, Jet Dry Rinse Aid finish. Uh, it actually works really, really well. Uh, it's a little bit better at, for the um, breaking up the surface tension and being a flow aid is what it's actually called for doing washes. Uh, so pick up some. It's only a couple bucks and it's super worth it. Another thing you'll need, of course, is always water and the models that you're going to be painting, of course. We're also going to be needing a brush or two. Now we are going to be doing this as a wash, so a big wide brush is going to do much better for you. Uh, you can also do the like, uh, really, really, really thick brushes will work really well. Um, I've even heard of sponges working. Whatever it is that works best for you, we'll go ahead and do it. All right, so we're going to do this process very much the same way that we have done our previous washes. We're going to take our white paint and just put it in some water here. And then we're going to take some of our other colors, put that in the water as well. Now, as for the actual amount of each color, that really comes up to you. Uh, in this case, I actually ended up using a bit more paint later on than I did when I first made this first batch. Uh, after each time that you mix up the paint, I recommend that you take the brush and wipe it on a napkin or a piece of plastic or anything. Just to kind of see how thick it is and see if that will work well for your project or not. Next, we'll be adding in the Jet Dry Rinse Aid. All right, so now we're just going to take our wash and take one of our models here, dip our paintbrush in the wash, get it nice and saturated in there, and just paint over top of the whole entire model. Uh, you want to get as much of the model covered in this wash, probably more than you think that you really need to. The wash is going to seep into all the little crevices of the model and really bring out all the details. If you'd like, you could even do first a wash of just white and then do the color on top. I found that this kind of worked for some of the models and kind of helped bring out some of the definition of the detail a little bit better, but you really don't have to do this. Now for a neat little trick that you can do, of uh, if you have to do like a hundred models in one day, you can kind of skip ahead and take your model and just 
dump dunk it right into your wash. Get the entire model covered all the way with a wash, and it will cover the entire model when you do it this way. But it is also a very fast way to get a lot of models done. I don't recommend this if you're doing just a few small models because the amount of wash tends to be too much in a lot of areas. Uh, but if you need to do 100 models in one day, this is a perfectly valid way to get it done. All right, that's pretty much the entire process. Uh, let those models dry. And if you need to, give it another coat or two. For mine, I actually had to use about three coats because uh, I didn't do very thick of a wash when I did it. But if you make the wash a bit thicker, you won't have to do as many coats. Or you can try more coats of different colors. A whole bunch of experimenting that you can do. Just try as much stuff as you can and find a process that you really, really like. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. A uh, pretty short one, and I hope it was really useful for you. I really think there's a lot of areas that you could look into when doing these clear plastic models, even though they don't look like they're very good at first. There's a lot that can be said for doing just a little bit of detail. And of course, if you're going to be adding in a light source, then I mean, you're just adding in all kinds of different things that you can be doing. It's really cool stuff. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Help me grow the channel. And of course, always share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors, anyone who might be interested in this kind of thing. Have a great day and keep painting all those models, guys.